Our next speaker is Dick List, and I hope I don't butcher your name, Passos. That's and perfect. And he is Bioaesthetics. So, Nicholas, take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me today. Um, so, my company uh, it's called Bioaesthetics, and we're focusing on transforming lives through the advancements in biomaterials. Uh, so, I'm gonna, just going to run through some of the products we have and uh, what we've been working on. Um, all right, so anyway, I'm, I'm with Bioaesthetics, and what we're doing is transforming lives through the advancements in biomaterials. And so our inaugural product is actually a nipple and areola graft for people who have undergone mastectomies due to breast cancer. And the goal of the company is to actually regrow uh, different organs for people who have uh, undergone uh, different reconstructive process. Wow, I'm very sorry. This, is, this doesn't happen to me before. Ooh, what just happened to all of them? You're up on the screen, too. If yeah, you hit slideshow, what's happening? The word slideshow, what does it, what does it do? Uh, At the, on the show top shows it, bar? It shows it, yeah, it shows it for me, but not for anyone else. And I can't advance the slides. Anyway, so I guess I'll just have to talk um, through it. My apologies. So um, we're working to regrow the nipple and areola for, for anyone who has, has had mastectomies due to breast cancer, including women, uh, people that are undergoing uh, gender confirmation, and also men that are undergoing reconstruction. So currently, there are more than 3.1 million breast cancer survivors uh, living in the United States. Um, and we're working on the figures for men as well. Um, but what we can do is actually take a personalized transplant where we take a donor material, uh, such as an, as an organ donor. So in this case, we would take a nipple and areola complex, uh, remove all the cells and DNA. And what we can do is actually transplant it onto a recipient. And by doing so, uh, the recipient's own cells grow into it to regrow a blood supply and full thickness skin. So within six weeks, what we have is a regrown nipple and areola complex. And so far, we've shown it uh, on a large animal biological model. And we're moving into clinic later this year at Stanford University on 15 patients, following them over a one-year timeline. Uh, and the goal is to show patient satisfaction, wound healing, uh, nipple projection, as well as full uh, thickness skin regeneration and blood vessels. Uh, so that's our first product. That's what we're getting to market this year. And then uh, additionally, Biostetics is also working on other regenerative medicine graphs, such as pressure ulcer graphs. Uh, so uh, predominantly in uh, elderly and uh, uh, the paralyzed. Um, so people that have mobility problems, a lot of times they have pressure ulcer problems. And a lot of times these, these when they get to past stage two, which they start showing uh, subcutaneous tissues such as bones, they get infected and it'll lead to amputations. So what we've been working on is actually creating new grafts that elude out antibiotics over a long period of time to actually decrease that antibiotic or uh, that microbial load within those wounds and create a full thickness skin regeneration inside of it as well. So we have a pipeline of pressure ulcers and then also pelvic organ prolapse, uh, which is predominantly all in female, uh, where the pelvic organs begin to prolapse uh, out of the body even. Uh, so we've also come up with three regenerative medicine graphs to actually regrow those extracellular matrix proteins in the pelvic organ region. Uh, so the nipple and areola is first, and then pressure ulcers and also pelvic organ prolapse. Um, and we're all using all um, sort of uh, personalized transplant materials, either from humans or from uh, animal derived in order to help with the uh, these problems with uh, these patient populations. So that's just a little overview of bioaesthetics. Um, my apologies about the presentation. I had some really nice pictures of nipple and areolas being engrafted and uh, blood vessels growing. Uh, I just couldn't figure out even though I did the practice run. So my apologies, you guys. Yeah, about can, it. You, can you share just the nipple, that one picture maybe? So that you can <laughs> yeah, hopefully it shows up. Yeah, that's uh, right. And then if not, did you put your put your web link so they can see it on the chat? That way they can go on their own too. Here it goes. Let's try this. Oh, there you go, guys. Did it show up? <laughs> yeah, it did. All right. Um, so what you see uh, on the left-hand side of the screen is a uh, 
the, the human derived or the uh, donor material, the starting tissue of the nipple and areola complex. Um, and what the picture is underneath it is actually shows up a, a microscopic image of skin. So all your cells in DNA would show up as dark blue or purple. And all the proteins that make up that donor nipple that give it the shape, the shape and size of that actual tissue would show up as pink. And what we do is we start with that donor material, but we remove all the cells and DNA from it. And what you're left with is a completely or mostly cell-free and DNA-free material uh, in the exact same shape and size of the starting donor nipple. And so then we would take this cell-free graft and engraft it directly onto a patient's uh, reconstructed breast um, to give them a living nipple and areola at the end of the day. And so the regeneration process takes about uh, six weeks. Um, and we've shown that inside of a, you know, a large biological model. Uh, and so that's what we're pushing forward with, with clinic uh, at the end of this year is to actually show that that, that can work out well. Um, so we'll be following patient satisfaction, uh, be most important over that one year timeline and the wound healing as well. Uh, I, uh, Peggy J. Harness, I've Go got a uh, Nicholas, what's the source of the donor, uh, DAC? Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, organ donors. So it's, it's, uh, deceased right. human donors. All right. So it's cadaver, it's cadaver source then it sounds like, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And in, in the animal stuff that you've done so far, is there any problem once it's revascularized? with any kind of overgrowth problems at all? Or uh, in other words, does the transplanted change? And also, what do you do for color? Do you have to tattoo to get the color back? Yeah, so inside of the non-human, uh, inside of our large animal model, what we've seen is that there's not, there has not been any overgrowth uh, so far, that the body can actually signal uh, when to stop uh, producing cells inside of it. Uh, and so we see a very healthy, amount of blood vessels, uh, the same as in a native or uh, a normal nipple and areola, um, just in a normal patient. Um, and the same thing with keratinocytes or uh, skin cells inside of it. For coloring, uh, what we see is that as a patient's melanocytes um, or coloring cells, as well as their skin cells grow into it, that also takes shape inside the nipple and areola. And that is one limitation inside of our, inside of our, our animal model that we've done our preclinical model is that they don't have the same pigment as humans. Um, so that is something that we'll be looking at later down the line as to whether or not uh, we need to produce a, a pre-colored graft or if it comes out colored as proposed um, or if it's something that needs to be colored afterwards. What we saw was that they came out darker and slightly pinker because of the, the amount of capillaries or blood vessels that formed within the graft. You could actually see a little bit more pink like what you would do like what would you see in a, a, a normal healthy nipple? Um, so that is something that we'll be looking at during that one year trial. And then I am assuming that the recipient site is deepithelialized so that uh, you've got a raw surface underneath, you're putting the graft on top of it, and it's basically like a full thickness skin graft at that point, correct? Exactly like that. So you deepithelialize it just like you would do with a normal um, skin graft or when you would reconstruct a nipple, uh, suture this nipple graft directly onto there. Um, you would put ointment on top of it so that it, you know, would use stop as a prophylactic, uh, uh, triple antibiotic ointment essentially like Neosporin. Um, and that's it. And it would be a full thickness graft directly onto the dermal bed. And a question that I had asked Nick too, would the nipple actually get feeling again in sensation? And what yeah. Is your... yeah, so that was not something we were looking at in our preclinical model uh, because that's pretty far in the future. But we had two uh, third party pathologists look at it, specifically in a dermatology pathologist, and they were able to identify new nerves that had grown into it. Um, so, again, this was completely cell free graft, and they were able to identify it in about 66 or 67 percent of the grafts. Um, so, the potential is there, but it has a it's uh, hugely dependent on how somebody has um, tissue removed, is being reconstructed, uh, what the peripheral nerves are in the area, if they've had radiation or not radiation. But we show that the graft doesn't inhibit nerve growth at all uh, in, the, in a, a healthy uh, body, about 67% uh, 
probably would see it. So that is something we'll, we'll also be looking at inside of our clinical study moving forward. Excellent, thank you. Any other questions for Nick? Doesn't look like it. Well, we thank you, Nicholas, for being on with us. And thank you for having me. News. Yeah. 